in another update of the Delphi trial. The trial just got magnitudes stupider. Jerry Holman, inspector, Indiana State Police, went on the stand and said a lot of things. I'm going to focus on one of those things. He claims he's a human lie detector. I'm, I, I'm not making this up, folks. I wish I did. Welcome to the show. After listening to Lawyer Lee, listening to Andrea Burkhardt, listening to Defense Diaries, their note-taking is excellent. If you want a full rendition of what they heard in court, go over to them. This is just me. Re well, reacting, so to speak, to what they what they said happened in court Saturday. Jerry Holman is a practitioner of the read technique. The read technique is abandoned in many places. It is abandoned in the in the rest of the civilized world. It, it has actually never happened in the rest of the civilized world, in the Western world. That you can lie to elicit information from your <laughs> from, from the person that you are interviewing. And the basis for this is in the read technique is that the person in front of you is guilty. That's the basis. And in, or, in order for you to extract information and preferably a, a confession, you lie to them, you deceive them, you make subtle threats. That kind of nonsense is what is making a lot of cases to appeals court and supreme courts to be overturned because of false confessions and a majority of those are through the re-technique it is inherently bad in my opinion but it's still allowed in parts of the United States to use that technique. That technique also involves body language. <laughs> now, body language is fun at YouTube. Body language is fun at a magic show. Body language is, in my opinion, completely useless in a trial setting as evidence because we are all different some of us are face touchers some of us uh, shy away uh, from eye contact on occasions you folks you you don't stare at the person you're talking to non-stop for the entirety of that conversation don't you this is creepy in my opinion. And in the read technique, you use this to interpret if a person is deceitful or not. <laughs> now, again, on as a magic show, not for file setting, in, in my opinion. And uh, for instance, in Canada, I just learned that lie detectors are inadmissible because 
it takes away from the jury and the judge. If it's a bench trial, which is often is in Canada, but sometimes they have jury uh, trials, it's inadmissible because it takes away from the jury to determine themselves if the person on the stand is a liar or not, or in the interview is a liar or not. That is a good standard and should be used in the entirety of the United States. Having Jerry Holman claiming he can, through body language, determine if somebody is deceitful or not, is taking that away from the jury. So that alone should make it inadmissible. And then you have it. It's a coin flip, folks. More or less a coin flip. If a lie detector is correct or not. You don't, because lie detectors measure pulse and, uh, yeah, but I, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I know it's garbage. And it's, it's wrong so many times. In, yeah, it, it's wrong too many times. And that is why lie detectors aren't in, admissible in U.S. courts. But apparently, in Indiana, a person... Jerry Holman can, can, can make that claim because of his training and experience. He can claim that a person is deceitful and make that determination instead of the jury. In, in Indiana, perfectly okay. That, I, I wish I was making this up. I really, really do. Let me find you a clip. Let's see if I can find a good clip here. Uh, some time ago, uh, maybe a month or so. I'm, uh, probably more. Yeah, okay, it's almost six months ago now. There was a widespread clip of a guy in the presence of two investigators for 17 hours and ultimately he confessed to his father's murder no i did yes, not. Did. Yeah. Yes. daddy's dead because of you this is the read technique they convinced this guy that his dad was, his father was dead. And then through the, this read technique, made him confess. This guy broke down completely, had a psychological episode. And his dad wasn't even dead. They just couldn't get a hold of him. So they got this poor guy to confess to his dad's murder. A false confession. That is the read technique, folks. And that is also why it is abandoned in many places in the United States and the entirety of the Western world, except the United States. You, you, you are, even if you believe yourself being a good I mean, I, 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 said, I say to you guys sometimes, I, ha I have a BS detector after 30 plus years uh, working with law. I would never in my life try to claim that my BS detector is some kind of evidence. No, the, it's, uh, it's uh, when I do negotiations, if I get a hunch, or the BS detector goes off, okay, then I try to steer that conversation because it's a negotiation. There are professionals in front of me. It's not a layman in front of me. That That is, and folks, sometimes my BS detector is simply wrong. It is. And when it comes to the read technique, it is that that technique tells the user of it that you are correct. 
you would determine that guy is guilty. And now with that assumption, evidence no longer matters. You need to extract a confession out of that poor person for hours and hours and hours on end. So that is what Jerry Holman took to the stand that testified under oath that looking down is a sign of deceit. Breaking eye can contact, sign of deceit. Face touching is a sign of deceit. And here is why this is so inherently dangerous because sociopaths can pretend. They fool the system all the time. If you use this, they would convince, a, say, a sociopath of some kind or a ritualistic serial killer or whatever. In front of Jerry Holman, they would not break eye contact. They would not do the face touching. They would not look down. Because the presumption in the re-technique is that the person in front of them is guilty and they feel bad about it. That is why they are making all these subtle movements. A sociopath doesn't have that. <laughs> yeah. Even a person with sociopathic tendencies don't have that. A narcissist don't have that because they don't believe they are wrong. They don't have that conscious. They don't have a conscience of guilt, so they don't give that away. But according to Jerry Holman, he is a human lie detector. He's perfect. But we also heard that from the from Andrea, from Loyalty, from uh, Defense Diaries about Saturday during cross examination. Jerry Holman was starting to be more quiet, almost whispering. He started to look down. He started to avoid eye contact. Uh, as Andrea said, about an hour and a half in, to, uh, in on her stream yesterday, he start, started to look at the jury for a brief second, then broke eye contact looking down. And according to himself, that is a sign of deceit. I hope to everything holy that the jury picked up on that. I hope to everything holy that the jury picked up on that because th that is so bad. And uh, then something came up. Something. Andrea didn't think of, I, I certainly didn't think of it. Listening in on all of that. McLeland on redirect asked the question about, because there was a jury question. Could that part of the bridge be entered from another way? And apparently, yes, it can. Somebody could actually walk up. You remember uh, the video, uh, how you see the bridge and the girl and the other girl is holding the phone filming. Somebody could walk up from behind there and somebody, the beginning of the video, according to the people who were in court, you could not see a person or the photo, no, the photo, you could not see a person at the far end of the bridge. But in the video, all of a sudden there was a person. It, isn't it a possibility that what creeped these girls out, making them starting filming, was a person who came up from behind them, starting walking out on that bridge? 
then turned around and started follow, following them. Wouldn't that cause that creepiness for them to start filming? Because a person in the distance just walking, well, they're on a trail. People walk that bridge all the time. That That's not that unusual. But a person walking out, turning around and starting follow them. That would creep somebody out enough to start filming. And that, ladies and gentlemen, goes completely against the state's theory. That, folks, since Richard Allen did not go up on that trail from the other end, that ruins the state's case. The more I think about it, the more sense it, it makes that not only bridge guy came up behind them, walked past them, turned around, started following them, but maybe there were two people there. And that is why you don't see, according to the people in court, you don't see bridge guy move his mouth when the words say, is spoken down the hill. For me, that the more logical conclusion is that there is two people there. Folks, the more information we get about this case, this trial, even with the complete bias from Josh Gull and the one-eyed tunnel vision from the investigators, even with that presented in court, folks, it, it, it's not Rick Allen. It simply isn't. We, even, the peop, even you who might watch this and say, uh, Rick Allen did it, but he needs a fair trial. You, you might want to extend that to it might not have been Rick Allen at all. That the state of Indiana tortured this guy for two, for, for two years, having him in prison, isolated, having mental breakdowns, fed narcotics, and then he confessed. And something, well, another thing. Apparently in the second interview between Holman and uh, Alan, Rick Allen told him, Whatever you do to me, I will not confess to something I didn't do. And it seems like Holman took that as a challenge. Oh, really, Mr. Allen? You don't think I can do enough to you to make you confess? And then Mr. Allen was put in prison, in solitary confinement, had narcotics. He had a psychotic breakdown. And then 61 confessions. Congratulations, Jerry Holman. You proved Rick Allen wrong. You could do a lot to Rick Allen to make him confess. Congratulations. Burn in hell, you evil son of a bitch. Jerry Holman, how many more are there? How many more lives have you ruined? because of your trust in the re read technique, that your opinion matters more than actual physical evidence? How many more false, false confessions are there in your name? How many more murderers have you let loose because you thought an innocent guy was the killer? How many more? All right, that's it for me. For well, this time, thank you for listening in. Thank you for keep allowing me to do this. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you all in the next video or stream. Okay, bye-bye.